Well, we had Matt Drudge about a month ago in studio, only does an interview every three, four years, and I thought that got me excited. But I'm telling you, Donald Trump is our guest, ladies and gentlemen, for the next 30 minutes or so. And obviously, he is a maverick. He's an original. He tells it like it is. Doesn't read off a teleprompter. Neither do I. He's self-made. This whole media operation that reaches 20 million people a week worldwide, conservatively self-made. That's why I'm so excited. And he joins us from Trump Tower in New York City. He is the leading 2016 Republican presidential contender. Donald Trump uh, again joins us. And I've got so many questions. But, but first off, uh, Donald, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Alex. Great. Great to be with you. I've got so many questions, but you are vindicated. This has got to be the 50th time the last six months on the radical Muslim celebrating, not just in New Jersey, but New York, Palestine, all over. What do you have to say? They're still attacking you, though we've got Dan Rather on video. We've got New York Post. We've got Washington Post. We've got, uh, I mean, what's going on here? Well, I took a lot of heat, and I was very strong on it, and I held uh, my line, and then all of a sudden, you know, hundreds of people were calling up my office. I was the other day in Sarasota, Florida, and people are in line, and we had 12,000 people, which is fantastic. And the people were saying, many of the people from New Jersey, four or five people said, Mr. Trump, I saw it myself. I was there. They talked about Patterson, but they said, I saw it myself, Mr. Trump. I was there. So many people have called in, and, and on Twitter, at real Donald Trump, they're all tweeting. So I knew it happened and I held my line and people wanted me to apologize and uh, we can't do that. People like you and I can't do that so easily. Now, we can do it if we're wrong, Alex. You apologize. I'd apologize if I was wrong. But they were celebrating and they were celebrating the fall of the World Trade Center. I think that's disgraceful. It is. And that same week you were uh, reporting on that fact, we had two different international football games, soccer games, with the Turkish fans and others during the moment of silence uh, for the dead people in, in Paris chanting Allah Akbar and booing. So did that not happen too? Well, that happened and everybody saw it. That was a week ago and the players were out on the field and they couldn't believe it. They were embarrassed. They didn't know what to do. The coach and the managers, they all apologized, but it happened. Look, we, we have to deal with reality. And, you know, it all started because I said, we need surveillance. We need proper surveillance. We have people that truly are evil. And they're coming from someplace, and you know sort of where they're coming from, at least the vicinity. And I said, we need proper surveillance, whether it's a mosque or any place else. We have to be surveilled, and we have to see what's coming at us, because we're not going to have a country anymore. Between the weak borders that we have, the pathetic and weak borders where politicians are afraid to do anything about it, uh, between all of what's happening with radical, you know, you, you look at what's going on, you have a president that doesn't even want to talk about you know, the radical uh, Muslim stuff. He doesn't want to mention the word. He doesn't want to say it. But you look at what's happening where we have a president that's over there celebrating global warming and trying to get everybody excited about global warming. Like, that's our number one problem. He considers that to be our number one problem. And our number one problem is what's going on where they want to blow up our cities and they want to blow up our country. That's our number one problem. And then our number two problem is Crippled America, your number one New York Times bestseller. We're going to talk about that in a few minutes, but let's continue with the number one problem. And I agree with you. Uh, it's now in mainstream news, Associated Press and others are reporting that it's a secret deal with Turkey, with the Germans, with Merkel, the, the admitted socialist, to bring in millions of radical Islamists. They admit almost all of them are Sunni that basically invaded Syria they're getting their butt kicked by the Russians, so now they want to flee up through the north into Turkey. You said months ago, bomb the oil of ISIS, and the, and the mainstream media laughed because you said the sky was blue again. Now the Pentagon says that's the right thing to do. And now you've come out saying, quote, uh, it looks like uh, that Turkey's on the side of ISIS, close quote. Well, that uh, the next day the Russians released satellite photos documenting that there are literally thousands of trucks coming up to the border at these huge terminals connected to Irgun, the president's son, making billions of dollars total off of this. Again, you're in trouble for saying the sky is blue. Well, I was right about that. I was right in saying in a book that I wrote, you covered it really nicely. I appreciate it. But I wrote a very political book years ago in the year 2000, The America We Deserve. And I said in that book that we better be careful with this guy named Osama bin Laden. I mean, I really study this stuff. I really find it very interesting. And even though I'm a businessman, I find it, I've always found, I've always have been involved in politics. I said, 
we better be careful with Osama bin Laden. There's a guy named Osama bin Laden. Nobody really knew who he was, but he was nasty. He was saying really nasty things about our country and what he wants to do to it. And I wrote in the book, 2000, two years before the World Trade Center came down, I talked about Osama bin Laden. You better take him out. I said, he's going to crawl under a rock. You better take him out. And now people are seeing that. They're saying, you know, Trump predicted Osama bin Laden, which actually is true. And then two years later, a year and a half later, he knocked down the World Trade Center. And I talked about terrorism and that. That was before terrorism as we know it today. I said, we better be careful. That's going to happen. It's going to be a big thing. And it certainly is a big thing. So with the oil, and I'm glad you brought it up, but as you know, for three years, I've been saying you better take out the oil because if you don't take the oil, it's going to be a problem. So we shouldn't have been in Iraq. But once we got there, the way Osama, the way we came out was was horrible. And I said, take the oil. Then we didn't take the oil. So ISIS got the oil. And as you know, Iran is getting the oil because Iran is going to take over all of Iraq. You know, we, we made one of the worst deals in the history of our world when we gave them $150 billion and virtually we gave them keys to nuclear weapons. One of the Mr. Most Trump, I hate to interrupt you. You are the leading presidential front runner with the Republicans gaining a huge lead as you don't back down. But I've got to just back you up again because the more I research what you've actually said and done, it's amazing. You were the only leading American figure who openly said, do not go to war in Iraq. They had almost, what, 90% votes in Congress for it, bipartisan. You said, don't do it. Iran will take over. Uh, you said, I mean, look, you can say that today, and everybody can say that, but you said that in 2001, 2002, 2003, when it was very unpopular because you've done your research and had good advisors. How did you know that when almost no one else did? Well, first of all, I'm the most militaristic person there is. I'm going to build the military. If I win, I'm going to make our military so strong, so powerful that nobody's going to mess with us. We're going to take care of our vets and all of that. But I have to tell you, you have to know if you're going to go to war, you have to do it properly and you have to know what to do. I viewed it as this. Iran and Iraq were the same in terms of strength. And they'd have, they're constantly fighting. That's all they do is they fight, right? They go to war all the time and they'd move 10 feet left, 10 feet right, 10 feet left, then they'd rest. And then they've started again four years later. This has been gone on for you know, forever. Years. Forever. And this is the way it is. I said, if you take out Iran or if you take out Iraq, either one, you're going to destabilize the Middle East. Well, we took out Iraq. And by the way, Iraq has the second largest oil reserves in the world. People don't even know that. So we gave, like, incredible. We took out Iraq. I said, you're going to destabilize. Well, and I said, and you'll know this, and you know this, and I appreciate what you just said, uh, then Iran is going to come in and Iran is going to take over Iraq. And they, they're just taking it over right now. As we speak, they're taking it over. Iran is running Iraq and very soon will be virtually going to be totally running Iraq, especially after all of the, you know, the deal we just made, which is the worst. So I said, keep the oil. And I said, if you're going to leave, you shouldn't have gone in, but they shouldn't have, they should have left soldiers behind like 20,000 or a certain number of soldiers. But if you're going to leave, take the oil. And I've said it. Then they left, they didn't take the oil. So ISIS got the oil, Iran is getting the oil, everybody's getting everything but us. So we lost thousands of soldiers. We spent $2 trillion in Iraq. We have wounded warriors who I love all over the place. And what do we get out of it, Alex? We had nothing, we had nothing. So, no, the French and the Germans are getting the oil and the Iranians are getting the oil. And you know who the number one customer for the oil is? Guess what, China. That's I mean, right. How smart is China? They outsmart us on every level militarily. They outsmart us on trade like we're losing. We have a $450 billion trade deficit with China. Let me ask you this. You're a top business guy you know, on your own from nothing. How did China get 97% of rare earth in, uh, uh, minerals in the world? How is the United States or nobody else even trying to get rare earth minerals when it's what goes in the smartphones, the computers, trillions is made a year? How did we just give them the global market in that? That's crazy. Well, what a lot of people don't know, Afghanistan. Now, Afghanistan's a place we can go in because, you know, you have Pakistan and you have nuclear weapons and a lot of things going on there. But we, we go into Afghanistan. We're fighting, you know, tremendous mountains and ridges. We're fighting on one side. And you know who's got their excavators on the other China. side? China. taking out all the minerals. You know, Afghanistan, nobody knew this. Afghanistan is rich with minerals, not oil, but minerals. Lithium, Actually, everything. And China is taking out all the minerals. And here we are fighting. We have trillions, we have like a trillion dollars in Afghanistan, and we get nothing out of it. And we're going to end up leaving and keeping a couple of thousand soldiers there and this and that. We get nothing. China is taking out the minerals. They're the, they're the buyers, the big buyers at very, very low prices of, as you know, of the oil in Iraq and probably in Syria. But China is a big buyer of the oil. But one thing with the oil, because sort of, you've covered it, 
For three years, I've been saying hit the oil because ISIS is getting strong and they're no JV, as the president said, and they're certainly not contained. But I said, hit the oil and hit them hard. And they laughed at me. And they would put generals on television saying, no, that strategy wouldn't work. Well, after Paris, they started hitting the oil. And it does work. The problem is we've given them a two-year edge. They have billions of dollars. The now. Russians started hitting the oil for one month, and ISIS is already rolling over. So Putin well, is following your, your strategy. You know well, Vladimir we Putin done, well. We should have done it two years ago, Alex. That's the only problem. Donald I mean, Trump joins us live. Can you speak to, as president, what your relationship would be with foreign leaders and, and, and what you know about uh, Vladimir Putin? Because all I know is, why are we starting a fight with Russia when they're not doing anything to us? Right. Well, uh, number one, and, and just to finish on the oil, by the way, I say hit the oil, but we should keep the oil. In other words, we should keep. We'll get ExxonMobil. They'll go in. We'll get other of our oil companies. We'll get some of the great oil companies. We bid it out. We should keep the oil. You know, in the old days, to the victor belong the spoils, right? We don't have that. We go in, we fight a war, and we leave. We get nothing, except we get death, and we get deficit. That's all we get. Uh, I think I get along great with people. I mean, I will probably get along well with him, and if I don't, somebody else will, and who knows? You know, he's a difficult cookie. He's tough and he's smart. I was on the show 60 Minutes with him recently, not together. I mean, we they did him and they profiled me at the same show, which was there. We were stable mates, right? But I think I'd get along very well with him. I think it'd do fine. Look, here's the thing. We lose with every country, and yet we don't get along with any countries. China is killing us. Everybody's killing us. China's just beating us to a pulp and trade. Japan, Mexico is killing us, and yet we don't get along with anybody. With me, they're not going to get so rich. Believe me, they're not going to get so rich at all. We're going to take back our jobs. We're going to take back our manufacturing. We take back our base. But they'll like us more than they do now. Sort of amazing. Well, Donald Trump, let me say this. My audience, I'd say 90% supports you. Okay. Right. And right. you definitely uh, have, have shown your knowledge of geopolitical systems. Hillary and others have been demonizing you for saying radical Muslims celebrated on 9-11. But she got caught a few years ago claiming that she got shot at in Bosnia, in the air, on the ground. They have video of it all. None of it happened. She admits she lied. If you did that, you'd be done. But you wouldn't do something like that. You don't steal glory from our veterans. But they yeah. demonize you for made-up scandals every day, trying to see what'll stick. And then you got Hillary involved in Benghazi. You've got them involved in everything. And people love you for tough talk. Is it not time for impeachment hearings against Obama? I mean, what do we do politically to really try to prosecute Hillary Clinton? Well, you remember this, the, the best thing that we have going with Obama is he's got a year left, okay? Because, you know, by the time you do the hearings and everything, I, I don't- So don't make know, him a martyr. In a way, you'll make him a martyr, but I, I don't even say that. You know, one of the things that I'm, I'm the most disappointed in Republicans, because they go to Washington, they're gonna do all this stuff, they're gonna impeach Obama, they're gonna uh, end uh, Obamacare, which has to be ended, it's a disaster. I don't know if you've seen the premiums, they're going up- It's killing everything. By 55%, it's, it's, it, you know, it's gonna implode anyway. In 17, 2017, Obamacare blows up. It's over. I mean, it's over, and everybody knows it, and they're, they're doing big stories. Even the ones that were for it are saying, uh-oh, this isn't working. Well, the premiums are a disaster, and if you look at anything having to do with Obamacare right now, it's over. But the problem with the Republicans is they'll try and fix it. They'll try, instead of get rid of it, and we can come up with a phenomenal plan that's much better for the people. The people are getting killed with that. So... There's so many things to do, Alex. We will do such a good job. There's so many fronts. A, a number. We'll, we'll win on trade. We're going to strengthen our military. We're going to take care of our vets. We're going to get rid of Obamacare. We're going to do so many things. There's so many things that can be done, but we have to use our good people. You know, everybody running against me in terms of even the Republican side, and Hillary certainly, they're all controlled by their donors and their special interests and the lobbyists, right? I'm putting up my own money. I'm funding my own campaign. Nobody's going to control me. I'm going to do what's right for you and for the American people. Listen, I get it. I mean, you are a true maverick. I understand. You, you know, you've made tens of billions of dollars. You've hired tens of thousands of people. I, I mean, I would imagine that as you've gotten older, correct me if I'm wrong, because I know you talked about wanting to serve America decades ago. Really, all it comes down to is wanting to have a free country for your children and grandchildren. And that's where I want to come to this point next. Because I know you're smart, sir, and, and I know that you also, though, you don't dumb your message down, but you keep it at a mid-level so the general public and the establishment as well can get it. But let's get down to brass tacks. Mm -hmm. I routinely talk to the top generals, special forces, mm -hmm. uh, Pentagon currently, uh, out of the Pentagon, CIA, as I know you do, and we'll just leave it at that. Um, there are a lot of people in this government and also retired who don't want to destroy the country. 
They really know that we've reached the crossroads where the country's done as a third world nation within a few more years. Forget Donald right. Trump in four years. If this happens, we're done. I mean, we're talking about resurrecting the dead here. We could turn it around right now, as you've said properly. You're, you're dead on, sir. You're right. We could turn it around. All the actuaries, all the numbers show it. But it's got to happen in the next few years or we're done. Right. And right. there are globalists that want to have a world government a system run by select crony capitalists using socialism at the grassroots to make people dependent. And I've talked to not just high-level folks that have been in government that are on your team, but separately high-level people in government currently that say there's an internal war going on and that you're a manifestation of that. I don't want to get anything inside baseball with you, but I already know the inside baseball. I know now from top people that you actually are for real and you understand you're in danger and you understand what you're doing is epic it's george washington level and you understand that office so i want to tell you right now can you speak about the war for the soul of this country that's happening right now and really tell people what's happening and commit to people that you won't ross perot under death threats and step down when you're in the lead uh two months from the election okay so let me just tell you alex as you know i'm leading in every poll nationally in every poll state i'm leading in iowa new hampshire south carolina the sec texas i'm leading in texas which I love. I love Texas. You know, we were there. Mark Cuban called up. He said, do you want to use the arena? I used it. We filled it up in three or four days, 20,000 people. In Mobile, Alabama, we had 35,000 people. We had 20,000 in Oklahoma. I'm so into this. And I'm not into it. You know, I could do other things that I would enjoy doing, to be honest with no, you. No, you're it's doing not, a dangerous mission. We understand that. It's not an easy thing. But the key is make America great again. We can make America great again. But if you have to suffer through four more or eight more years of what's gone on in the past and, and you know, what's going, it's just, we're being eaten away. It's just, eat. it's eating away at our country. And we can make, in my opinion, we can make America greater than ever before. But we have to get going. It has to happen. We have to get going. And, you know, when you look at the vision, I said, Iraq, you agreed with me on Iraq. I said, hit the oil. I said a lot of things that turned out to be true, 100% true. And I'm giving credit. I'm giving credit by some people. Some people refuse to acknowledge it. You know, they refuse to say. No, you've been, you've been, you've been absolutely on target. So what I'm asking is, though, a, can you speak to the crossroads we're at right now, though? Because you've talked about it. Are we at a crossroads to decide whether this country's done or whether we go to the next level? Well, I think this, I think that, sadly, I think that if we don't get it right this time, I think this is going to be the most important election our country's ever had. I mean, you'd have to say George Washington was, is right there, you know, the couple of pretty important elections, right? But this is certainly in the last, in the modern era, this is the most important election, election our country's ever had. If we don't get it right, if we put another one of these people in, like Hillary, I mean, she, she's so corrupt. She is so corrupt, and she shouldn't even be allowed to run and frankly, her greatest legacy, she was a horrible secretary of state. If she's if she runs, I think her greatest legacy will be that she got out of the email scandal. That's what I think. It'll be one of the greatest jobs I've ever seen of getting out of a scandal because General Petraeus and many others, I mean, their lives have been destroyed for doing 5% of what she did. That's right. So she shouldn't be allowed to run. But, you know, the recent Fox poll that just came down two days ago has me beating her head to head, which is very interesting and very good and beating her soundly head to head. But we have to get it right. Our country can be absolutely, we can turn it around. But I would agree with you, if we don't get it right this time, I'm not sure if you go another four or eight years with the insanity and the stupidity of these leaders, I'm not sure you're gonna be able to turn it around anymore. I think it could be no, over. Right. Donald Trump, the man in the arena, his new book, uh, we're gonna talk about in a moment, is exposing the fact this country is being sabotaged by design. Specifically, I don't want to bring up detractors. And it's a question I had early on, but then I did more research. And I understand that you really do want to save this country where your children and grandchildren live. But let's expand on this. There are certain pundits out there saying you played golf with Bill Clinton. And so, you you know, you've, you, you had to do business in New York. So you said nice things about Hillary. I get keeping your enemies closer when you're not, you know, in politics. I get it. I understand. I think that's what you did. But, but tell us specifically... And I, and I don't think this now. I've seen it. I know you're for real. You wouldn't be saying the things you're doing. They're scared of you. The whole system's coming on against you. But, but promise us that you're not going to dr drop out at the key moment, keeping all the other Republicans out of view, and then Hillary races to the head or, or Jeb Bush does. Because as you know, folks are claiming you're a Clinton operative. You know, I've never heard that. I've, I've, I heard it actually a few months ago, but I've hit her harder than anybody times 10 if you look at this. You have, you yeah, have. You. I was a businessman, yet I've only been a politician for five months. I hate to use the term because, you know, it's all You're talk. You're a statesman. No 
visions. But I've just been doing this for a very short period of time. I was establishment. You know, I was like a guy like you would say Trump is total establishment. And I was a big donor to a lot of different Republicans. But over the years, I've given to Democrats. I've given to Republicans. I've given to everybody because I had an obligation. I was a businessman. One of the magazines recently called me a world-class businessman. The truth is I did. I built an unbelievable company, a tremendous assets, tremendous, not only that, iconic assets, very little debt, tremendous cash flow. It's a great company. And by the way, people now see how good when I did the filing. Everyone said, oh, he'll never file, he'll never file. It's almost 100 pages long, and it's an unbelievable company. So I built, which by the way, the reason I say that, that's the kind of thinking our country needs. But I got along great with Clinton. I got along great with Harry Reid. I got along great with everybody. Because when I needed them, I didn't want to have argument. I didn't want to have somebody say, well, Clinton doesn't want it to happen. Sure, you're not so a loser. You don't get in mindless fights. You move forward with your agenda. Well, but now you see America in trouble and you're, hey, yeah. that's all sideline now. Donald Trump's not working for Donald Trump. He wants to work for America. Yeah, as a businessman, you couldn't have even functioned if you don't get along. No, with I know. Yeah. For example, in New York City, it's 95 percent Democrat. I mean, if, if I didn't get along with the Democrats, I wouldn't have one. Well, I'll tell I'm you, I mean, you did want the vice president, you know, a position that's come out decades ago behind the scenes. I, I mean, I know you're a Republican. What about libertarianism? What's your view of libertarianism? And then I want to ask you, who's your favorite president and who do you think your running mate might be? Folks think it's Ted Cruz. Well, I think that libertarianism is sort of interesting. There are certain things that I really like about it, but, you know, uh, keeping government out as much as possible. We need government for protection. We have to protect. When you look at these maniacs in the Middle East that want to destroy us, and, you know, the problem we have today, Alex, is the weaponry. If this were 100 years ago, I'd say forget about them. Let them keep fighting. They've been fighting all their lives. Let them keep fighting each other. Who cares? But the weaponry is so powerful, and they hate us so much that we have to now protect. So that's a big part of government. So there's a certain common sense to certain elements. And I do very well with the libertarians, frankly, you know, because they sort of get it and they, they get me. But we need bigger strength than I think the libertarians really want. And we need it. And we have to have it. We have to have it. If we don't have it, we're not going to have a country. If we don't have borders, we're not going to have a country. As far as running mates, it's too soon to say. I, I actually respect a couple of people that are on the stage. Some of them I have absolutely no respect for. They're, I mean, I think they're not very good at all at what they do. You look at what's going on. But uh, I have respect for a number of people that are on the stage with me. I have respect for a lot of people that are throughout this country, you know, political people. I'll pick somebody I think that can really be a great vice president, ultimately has to be a great president because that's, you know, 90% of that function is, you know, if something bad happens, they got to be a good president. You have to view it from that standpoint. And my favorite president in the more or less modern era would be Ronald Reagan. I've always liked him. I helped him. And by the way, he was a Democrat. A lot of people don't know. He was. Some of a liberal Democrat, Alex, as you know. And he became a somewhat conservative, I wouldn't say the most conservative, but a somewhat conservative Republican. But he wanted to make America great. And he really did. He wanted to make, he had actually, let's make America great. That was his, and mine is make America great again. So there's a little bit of a difference, but my son, uh, my son, you know, finally sold me on being a bigger supporter of yours. I mean, I liked you love Americana. You're pure Americana, but I'm still, you know, it was research, but, but my 13 year old son's really smart. There's a lot of research. He, he watches all the debates and he just really loves you. He is on cloud nine that you're here, Rex Jones. And it was his question, uh, you know, uh, which president was your favorite, uh, but, but all time, all time. Who's your favorite? Well, all time, I'd say Ronald Reagan, uh, shorter term, I would say, well, you, you know, you look at Lincoln and you look at Washington, you have to go with, they were, they're the classics, right, Alex? You know, you, you think in terms of the great classics, you have to go with the Lincolns and the Washingtons. I agree, Once as a man's started, man, George Washington was a badass. Yeah, that's what they say. I mean, that's what they say. He said, they say he never told a lie. Let's hope that's true, okay? But George Washington was pretty good. But we had some, look, we had some great presidents, and we had some good presidents on the other side, too, in all fairness. But... Uh, we will hopefully be right at the top of that list. We're going to make the country so strong, and we're going to make it financially secure. We can't owe $21 trillion because it's going to be that well, That's my very final question. What type of an elite wants a Cloward and Piven bankrupt the country so socialists can run it and we all get handouts? What type of an elite is that? I mean, you've been around these people. Are they mentally ill, Donald Trump? Well, we have to make our country rich again. You know, the other day I said to a woman, to a, she came up to Mr. Trump, at a big rally where we had 14,000 people. And at the end, she just sees me and I'm, I'm you know, signing autographs and stuff. And she said, Mr. Trump, I'm voting for you 100%. But 
but are you, this whole concept of making it rich, it sounds so crass. I said, you know what, it might sound crass, but if we don't make our nation rich again, if we don't take back our jobs from all these other countries that are ripping us, and if we don't take back our money, and if we don't, you know, balance up our budget, at least get it damn close and soon, we're not going to have a nation anymore. We're a third world country. Donald Trump. You know, I know you've got to go. 60 second break. I want to come back for just three minutes. Talk about your book and your big rally in Virginia tonight. We'll be back in 70 seconds. Donald Trump. Powerful interview. Did you know that only six corporations control 90% of what millions of Americans see, hear, and read every single day? It's the illusion of choice. Think about it. The mainstream media is owned by only a handful of mega corporations with vested interests. But on the other hand, the internet is an interconnected network of billions of sources. So you can research information for yourself from multiple sources, or you can blindly accept what you hear or read in the mainstream media, never questioning what you are being told. This gives you a false sense of reality. I mean, do you actually know what you think you know? Or have you been programmed to accept someone else's version of events? Think about it. This is Darren McBreen, and I want you to break the matrix at Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.tv. And listen to The Alex Jones Show, because there's a war on your mind. You got to want to be on the top. You got to want to be free or you're going to be slaves. Donald Trump's agreed to stay a few more minutes with us. Uh, and he brought up, you know, somebody that he wanted to thank on air that I want to thank on air. He came in here a month ago. He's been on all these big shows. Just an incredible guy. I was aware of who he was, a patriot fighting communism all over the world. Tell us, Mr. Trump, about Mr. Stone, who helped get this interview uh, set up. Well, Roger's a good guy, and he, he is a patriot and believes strongly in a strong nation, a lot of the things that uh, that I believe in. And, he, you know, I see him all over television. Uh, people like Roger. He's a tough cookie, I will tell you that, but people like him. But he's been so loyal and so wonderful, and he is the one. He really wanted me to do this interview, and I'm doing it. And uh, so uh, we appreciate it, Roger. Well, I knew who he was, but then I did more research on him. This guy literally fought communists all over the world, ran big elections against the Soviet Union uh, in, in Latin America and Africa and Asia. I mean, it, uh, and I know he's been friends with you for a long time and advising you. So again, my respect level went up even more knowing that you're talking to real political operatives, not, not fake pundits that are on TV. And that brings me to mainstream media. I love the fact, when I first saw it a few days ago, they misrepresented it. They said Trump wants $5 million. Then I read deeper. You said give $5 million to wounded warriors before yeah, I go make CNN $50 million. That's what you make these shows. Isn't but that terrible? You know, they took that statement. And I said give $5 million. I'm going to want $5 million that we're going to give to the wounded warriors or the vets, right? Which is the same thing as far as I'm concerned. We split it up. Because they're making a fortune on these debates, which never had anybody. You know, Fox had 24 million people. They used to get like a million. And uh, CNN had the biggest ratings in the history of CNN. And I won't take full credit, but I'll take 99.9% .9 credit. So I said, give me $5 million. I want to give it to the wounded warriors. I, I want to give it to the vets. And But a lot of people said Trump wants $5 million. And I said it right in the same sentence, Alex. I didn't say it like... That's how know, they deceive. I said, I want $5 million that will go to the wounded warriors. And they would play it. They even took the tape. You know, the tape is worse than the pen. They can cut it. So they say, give me $5 million, and then they cut it. Nobody knows, what am I doing? I'm asking for money to be on a debate. It's ridiculous. No, I wanted $5 million to go to the wounded warriors in particular. And uh, let's see what happens. I don't know. You know, the one problem, Alex, if I didn't go to the debate, then you know what would happen. They'd say he's chicken. I mean, I think I won every debate. Every but it's time. true. I mean, I saw one channel made like $40 million off you being on there. Yeah. They should give all of it to the vets. Well, they should give a lot more than five, I'll tell you right now. But, you know, the problem is if I say I won't do it, then uh, the people that I'm debating who, frankly, have been very easy, if you want to know the you truth. You can just correct them once you're on stage. Well, the people I'm debating, they'll say, oh, he's chicken, he's chicken, he's chicken. You know, that's that's the problem with that. But it's hard when you're leading all the polls and then you don't show up to a debate and then they'll be uh, doing numbers on you. But I, I would love to see money go to the wounded warriors. I think it's it would be I so agree. Funny. What about you know, crippled it's America? Thing. It's a number yeah. one. you got a big rally tonight. Everywhere you go, your crowds just get bigger. I mean, obviously, you're probably going to get the Republican nomination now. Wow, and you're ready for the dirty tricks. It, uh, one minute left, Donald Trump. What do you have to say about your book and what's coming up? 
Well, first of all, before the book, because you mentioned one thing, I had never heard that, but I am in this to win it. I am not in this to say, oh, gee, I've done a really good job. A reporter called up, a very powerful reporter said, how does it feel? How does it feel? I said, it only feels because they said what we've done has never been done before politically. You know, I've been in the poll for five months since it came out. I'm number one. I said, it's only good if we win. If I, if I don't win, I've wasted a lot of time. That's the way I view it. He said, no, no, you haven't. You haven't. I said, believe me, if I don't win. Because we can't do anything to make our country great if I don't win. I'll be watching television someplace. It'll be forget it. So I wrote a book called Crippled America. It's doing uh, fantastic business. I don't know if you can see that thing right up we there. We can. But it's doing great business. I hope your audience goes out and buys it as Christmas gifts and everything else. And I just want to finish by saying your reputation's amazing. I will not let you down. You will be very, very uh, impressed, I hope. And I think we'll be speaking a lot, but you'll be... Uh, You'll be looking at me in a year and a year or two years. Let's give me a little bit of a time to, to run things. But uh, a year into office, you'll be saying, wow, I remember that interview. He said he was going to do it, and he did a great job. You'll be very proud of our country. Well, I'm impressed. I mean, you're saying you're fully committed. You know, there's no future if we don't take this country back. Donald Trump, I fully. hope you can help uncripple America. Thank you so much, sir. That You will be attacked for coming on, and we know you know that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Clean, toxic-free body is the foundation of true health. Introducing Deep Cleanse by InfoWarsLife.com, a scientifically formulated blend of nanocolloidal zeolites and organic ingredients that aid the body in cleansing chemicals and toxic metals. Using our proprietary multi-step extraction technology, Deep Cleanse is our most affordable all-in-one cleanser. With concentrated organic compounds like cilantro, milk thistle, fulvic acid, orange peel, zeolites, and others, Deep Cleanse doesn't hold back. Instead of buying five, six, or even seven different cleansing products. We use decades-old scientific research to put together the Rolls-Royce of all-in-one cleansing. Look, there's a reason Deep Cleanse is the only product on the market that uses our proprietary Spigerex herbal processing technique. We use only the highest quality organic herbs backed by serious research, and we still bring it to you at the best price out there. If you wish to find Deep Cleanse and experience the all-in-one cleansing, visit InfoWarsLife.com. That's InfoWarsLife.com or call 888-253-3139. In the past decade, we have witnessed unparalleled scientific discoveries in the area of health. But no one has put together a formula that focuses directly on brain health, nerve growth factors, and optimizing your cellular energy at the same time. DNA Force is one of the most expensive formulas to produce. Some of the ingredients in DNA Force are $12,000 a kilogram. We are using the coveted, patented, only American source of PQQ, CoQ10, and more. You want the best that's out there at the lowest price anywhere? Well, we're bringing you a total win-win. The ultimate value, cutting-edge, trailblazing game changer that also supports the info war. We have produced a limited run of DNA Force, and it will take up to 12 weeks to produce more once we sell out. Secure your DNA force today at InfoWarsLife.com or call toll-free 888-253-3139. DNA force from InfoWars Life.